Hello, listeners. Thank you for joining us for Tell the Story, Journeys of Purpose. This is the next to the last episode of the podcast, and I have a reoccurring guest with us today, my sister, Michelle Pringle. And today we are going to be talking about communication and conversations. So please lend us your ear. We're grateful that you're here, and let's get started. For listeners who don't know, Michelle Pringle is an educator in the Chicopee School System, and she also happens to be my sister. She is a reoccurring guest, and like we said, today she's going to talk to us about communication and conversation. So Michelle, for those who have not heard you on previous episodes, please tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Michelle and um, I work in the Chicopee school system as a paraprofessional educator. I have worked there for quite some time, over several years. I talk to uh, students and help them with their work and engage in um, academic activities and um, any other help that they may need at any particular time during the school hours. I also am a mother, a grandmother, a sister, an aunt, cousin, niece, and a good friend to many or some, depending on who you're talking to. (laughs) A good friend to many, most. So we're going to get started, Michelle. And the first question I'm going to ask you is, what do you think communication is? Well, and looking at up what communication is. It says the imparting or exchanging of information or news. Another definition said means of sending or receiving information. And then they said the best definition was the exchange of ideals and thoughts within two or more individuals is the best definition I feel. And the reason I feel that that is the best definition is because that's exactly what we do. It's more likely that we have conversations with um, other people, whether it's one or uh, two or more people, as they say. That is communication as far as I'm concerned. Why is that important to you? In a school environment, especially when you're working with smaller individuals, I call them my little young chicklins, it is important to have communication with them, communication that they understand clearly. So there is nothing that is uh, said that the individual does not understand, misunderstand. And you want them to be able to listen to you and hear what you're saying clearly so they don't have any doubts about what they're going to say or what you're saying. Michelle, how can communication be used? Communication can be used through writing, speech, gestures symbols, or written communication, which are all essential when talking to one another. Do the children understand that when you explain it to them, or do you explain it to them, or you, do you just teach it to them? Well, that's, that's interesting, because sometimes when you're talking about communication, I think it's more or less sometimes implied and not always necessarily taught. Um, For example, good listening or communication would be, a part of it would be active listening. 
through your program and what you do teaches me how to become an active, active listener, how to listen to someone clearly without constantly, for example, interrupting. That's one of the things that um, I try to teach the kids in a nice manner by when you're speaking um, that you allow the other person to be heard before they are they start to speak themselves. Children get very excited and want to say what they want to say right away. And because that happens, they're constantly at times talking over you. And when you explain to them that they're talking over you, they look at you kind of like, what? Um, but we know what, we, what we're saying when we say talking over you. That means that doesn't mean over your head. That means that the talking, their words are talking over your words. And that is also explained to them so they understand what the meaning of that is. And then you hope when you're talking to them about that, that they will gradually, not always, you know, sometimes some of them do stop talking right away. Some of them have to catch on. And it's just a practice that you have to consistently do over and over again and not get frustrated about doing it. So in, in listeners, for those of you who don't know, I have a certification in uh, active listening. So that is what my sister is talking about um, and how uh, essential it is in the fundamentals of communication skills. Unfortunately, it's not our faults that we're not taught how to actively listen um, when we are in school. You know, it's not part of the school curriculum but it is necessary for us to build a firm foundation when it comes to communication. So, Michelle, what are the school systems doing to correct this crack in our communication skills um, at the fundamental level when we are being taught K through um, sixth grade elementary, uh, or is anything really being done at all? Well, at my school, as I've said before, we do have a program that is SEL. Uh, that program helps to teach children mindful things about their feelings. And um, one of the other things, about mindful listening, how you should uh, meditate sometimes in terms of relaxation. Like if you're upset or you're anxious or you're overly excited in ways that you can calm yourself down so that you are ready for, say, that next conversation. And in doing that, that also helps not just the child themselves, but also their peers that are around them, as well as the teachers. And it helps to have a better day. Thank you. When did they start teaching mindful listening? That more or less um, started to begin um, after the the pandemic, we've noticed that the children needed more in terms of uh, mental, mental help um, and emotional to convey their feelings that they, the things that they may be going through or to let us know how they're feeling for the day whether they're sad or happy or excited or disappointed, um, 
whatever type of emotional feelings that they would allow or like to share with us so we would know um, how they're feeling for the day or at least at that moment. And if we needed to address um, that situation with the child so they would have a better day as well um, and know that there there is someone that they can come to to talk to so they wouldn't have to or they don't have to go through the day uh, feeling if they're not feeling up to par that there is support for them. How easy is it to implement mindful listening uh, to your students? Oh, it's very easy. It's a combination of video activities as well as instructional activities that the teacher and another um, teacher work together in helping to teach the children how to be mindful listeners and to help the children express their emotions. Michelle, how do you communicate? Well, that's a good question. I communicate with active listening by listening with a thoughtful purpose. So when they are speaking, I am present. So they have my attention as much as possible. I will say it's challenging at times because there are times that you have five little ones coming at you and each and every one of them have something to say. And you try to quiet them down by saying, hold on, this person has the floor first or this person right here is speaking or you need to wait your turn and I will listen to you as quick as I possibly can. Some of them have a hard time waiting. So they get overexcited and, and, and try to rush the process along. And I don't blame them because some of them have a, are very winded and have a lot more to say than others. But for the most part, I try to be a good active listener from remembering the things that my sister has taught me. Thank you, Michelle. You're this welcome. Is, <laughs> this is a good lead-in uh, because hopefully uh, the next podcast I will have will be um, associated with uh, my certified active listening role. Yeah, and uh, we will talk more about active listening and communication in the school system. And uh, hopefully, Michelle, you will be a guest or a recurring guest on that podcast as well. Okay. So are there any final thoughts as we... Um, wrap up, tell the story, Journeys of Purpose. But first, I want to know your final thoughts on communication um, in the school system. And you're my last guest on Tell the Story, Journeys of Purpose. So please, the floor is open to you. Well, first of all, I am, as I said before, I am honored to be on your podcast. I am honored to be your last guest on your po on this podcast. There will be another, and I am honored to be on that one when there is another. I have enjoyed listening to your podcast, and it is great because I can continue to listen to your podcast, even though you may not be making more on this particular one. But I am truly honored, and as I said before, and blessed and so happy and excited for you that this is just the first of hopefully many and more to come and um, to use, seriously use active listening. It is so important and it makes such a difference in a person's life and the other people's lives that are listening to you as well. Remember, when you're doing it, you're also teaching someone else how to actively 
be an active listener. So don't just think it just stops with you. It's a, a gift that keeps on giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. Thank you for that, Stacy. You're welcome. I, I'm just blessed to be a part of it. It's a, a gift that God has given to me, and uh, I just, I, I just am blessed to be able to be a gift or hopefully a blessing to others and to receive that gift back. You are a blessing for Thank sure. You. Thank you. And this way and many others. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Listeners, isn't she a sweet sister? Love her. So listeners, I thank my sister, Michelle Pringle, once again, educator uh, extraordinaire in the Chicopee public school system. She's making a face at me right now, but she is, you should see, she is so beloved. I've said this again, I'll say it over and over again. She's so beloved. She is she is extraordinary, even if she doesn't see it. That's how humble she is. So that adds to the fact that she's extraordinary. So I'm just grateful for her. I'm grateful for her insight and her wisdom and her dedication to her students, um, to her colleagues, and the work that she does to help our students grow and become who they're supposed to be on their journey. She's a kind soul who gives so much of herself. And I see that every day. Our family sees it every day. Her students see it every day. Her colleagues see it every day. And again, that's why she's so beloved. So thank you, Michelle. We thank you for your service each and every day. And um, even when she's not, working five days a week. She's still giving, giving, giving out of the weekend. So thank you for that. So listeners, I'm wrapping up our last interview for Tell a Story, Journeys of Purpose. I'm grateful that my last guest was my sister. And I look forward to more interviews with her in the next podcast. So be well, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, please comment. So thank you, listeners, for lending us your ear. I appreciate you for listening. Be blessed.